Uh, today we are going to talk something about quality vegetative, vegetable seed production in open and protected cultivation conditions. So open in the sense uh, normal fields, open fields, there is protective cultivation in the sense uh, in the greenhouses or uh, poly houses, shade nets, etc. And how those two things uh, are playing a key role in today's agriculture. Let's we move on. Uh, you observe the picture, it's Almeria, Spain. It's known as the Sea of Plastic due to the numerous greenhouses that, that cover uh, the area. If you observe, all these things are greenhouses. Uh, furrows of artificial light land on otherworldly or are to Westland, the greenhouse capital of Netherlands. All these are climate controlled farms such as these uh, grow crops all around the clock and every kind of uh, weather conditions. These are 24 by 7 working farms in case of Netherlands. So we are taking to a new world uh, by seeing this picture. The importance of quality seed, although cost of seed is only a fraction of the total cost of inputs in growing a vegetable crop. However, the availability of good seed is always important, basic requirement in increasing the production and productivity. Uh, raising healthy seedlings uh, through good quality seed and suitable cultural practices, optimum environmental conditions are very prerequisites for the success of vegetable growing. Inadequate availability is one of the major causes for low productivity and poor quality of the vegetables. Then in order to enhance the production productivity of these vegetables, it is necessary to increase the production of the quality vegetable seeds. Then why vegetable seed production in protected conditions? You may be having a question. The protected vegetable condition has been to increase the production of quality vegetable seed while off-season and for long duration commercial purposes as well. So raising the seed crops of high value vegetable crops under protection can further enhance the production and the quality of those seeds. So high value vegetable crops, you know, much better crops like uh, sweet pepper, uh, cherry tomato, uh, and also cucumbers to some extent, uh, and uh, other crops. So uh, these need so much attention for uh, quality in seeds. Then protective structures and vegetable crops suitable for seed production. Uh, going with the first one, the greenhouses which are mainly climate controlled and semi-climate controlled. So here everything is controlled, automated systems are doing these things. I have shown in the previous slides about Netherlands, how the farms uh, which are climate controlled are affecting 24 by 7 uh, uh, agriculture or the seed production activities at Netherlands. So use for seed production of high value vegetables as the crops gets a very short crop season under the open field conditions so for that crops this is our best option the high value vegetables including slicing tomatoes cherry tomatoes sweet peppers parthenocarpic cucumbers etc and what is a major constraint it is the initial cost of fabrication and running cost of these is very high so which increases the cost uh, seed cost as compared to the seed produced under open field conditions so what is the advantage then the yield and quality of the seed under these uh, structures is always very high so if you observe the, these pictures of uh, cherry tomato growing under climate controlled greenhouses, observe everything is controlled, everything is fixed, no intervention of human, uh, it's almost reduced to very minimum extent. So temperature, uh, water, everything, everything are uh, automated here. The naturally ventilated greenhouses. These can be used for seed production of tomato, sweet pepper, cucumber, including parthenocarpic cucumbers, summer squash, muskmelon, etc. The duration for seed crop and the seed yield are less compared to the climate controlled or the semi climate controlled greenhouses. Here, the duration is less. Then, this is an example of a naturally ventilated greenhouse. You observe ventilation at the top and that's also as well as on the sides. So, naturally allowing some ventilation to happen. 
Then insect proof net houses. These can be also used for commercial seed production of sweet pepper, tomato, green gel and other vegetables like cucurbits. So used to protect the crops against viruses, other insects like fruit borers during the rainy and post rainy seasons. The seed yield is always less compared to all the kinds of greenhouses here and the cost of production which is also very less compared to the greenhouse. So, yep, so these are uh, the insect proof net houses. Uh, so then plastic load tunnels so these can be used for commercially for off season production of the seed production of the cucurbits the basic purpose is to advance the seed crops which is not possible under open field conditions especially in the northern plains of india then walk-in tunnels so these can be used commercially for seed production of cucurbits like musk melon watermelon summer squash bottle gourd bitter gourd etc during the off season but these structures can only be used during the peak winter months to protect the crops against low temperature injury that is cold injury that is between December to mid February especially in the north Indian plains and walk-in tunnels plastic low tunnels even rain shelters are suitable for raising seed crops of onion French bean leek garden pea etc especially in hills where their seed maturity coincides with the rains so that is not desirable as far as seed crop is concerned and then these are the different structures what we have studied and that duration of the seed crop how much time it takes under the greenhouse so if you observe uh, from top to bottom if you observe the climate control semi-climate control uh, the duration of the seed crop is much longer as compared to naturally ventilated insect proof walking tunnels or plastic low tunnels this is the most key observation you need to make so then training and pruning operations uh, you know training is uh, we are trying to um, direct it in a particular direction to grow that's training and pruning is we want to remove the unwanted uh, parts or uh, we are trying to uh, remove the obstacles uh, to have a particular architecture in the plant the coming to tomato the growth habit can be indeterminate semi-determinate or determinate so what is the difference between indeterminate and determinate so if it is ending up in the flower and fruit that is a determinate type it is continuously flowering even after the flower bud again it is branching that's a indeterminate type you observe the picture on the right hand side the first one is an indeterminate type the second one is a determinate type it will end up the second one in the fruits that's all that has no more growth if you observe the picture uh, right below it first one is a indeterminate type you observe after getting flu fruits also the other uh, parts of the plant are getting flowers and then uh, whereas determinate type once it is getting flowers fruits that's it end up the crop the indeterminate varieties or the hybrids are preferred for hybrid seed production inside the greenhouses uh, such plants can grow over a long period of time and produce number of uh, fruit trusses then seed production of the indeterminate or semi-determinate varieties is less popular and not preferred under greenhouse conditions uh, why because because it is uh, ending up and we need to take it again and again that's a laborious process then usually first to fourth cluster at each branch are selected for emasculation in case of hybrid seed production and the training and pruning is regular process in the greenhouse tomato crop hence careful attention is always needed which helps in high yield high yield of the seed then coming to sweet paper so the pruning in sweet paper is normally limited to the shoots that grow on this stem below the first branching or to some of the weak side shoots so pepper leaves are rather low level photosynthetic efficiency uh, containing and uh, consequently large area of the active leaves is necessary to produce sufficient dry matter for them so the pruning is done only in few cases where the growth is luxuriant luxuriant in the sense too much of leafy growth and under uh, than the required under protected cultivation the stem structure of the pepper is often too weak to take the load of the plants and uh, hence there is need to train the plant so pepper plant should be trained upright by allowing two main branches after removal of the first terminal bud in a way to expose the leaves to maximum light and the canopy must always be ventilated canopy so this is how we go for sweet pepper
then coming to eggplant eggplant it's nothing but brinjal our brinjal the eggplant has an upright growth habit hence a horizontal strings are fixed uh, if you observe in the picture on the right hand side drop on either sides of the plant row are enough to support them and then a good pruning system consists of removal of the side shoots up to the position of the first flower appearance so that's needed allowing two branches to develop from the terminal bud node and uh, followed by periodical removal of the shoots from the inner part of the plant and removal of the oldest surface to allow good air exchange and balanced framework of the plant this is how uh, we maintain an eggplant and cucumber covers a supporting system in order to grow vertically by means of ten tendrils. The plastic or fiber strings are used for this purpose. They hang down from the wide structure at a height of 1.5 to 2 meters. Short fruited cultivars. So, fruits and the side shoots of the main stem are removed up to a height of 40 to 50 centimeters in this case. So, the pruning can be done in four different ways. So, the first uh, uh, approach is the side shoots are pruned to first fruit or leaf and the fruits on the main stem are also removed. The second approach is the side shoots are pruned to first fruit and two leaves and the fruits on the main stem are also removed. The third uh, uh, approach is the side shoots are pruned to one fruit and two leaves and the fruits on the main stem are allowed to develop. And the fourth approach is the side shoots are pruned to one fruit and two leaves up to one meter and then pruned to two fruits and three leaves up to two meters and the fruits on the main stem are removed. So in this way we are going to train and prune cucumber then parthenocarpic varieties so uh, in gynaecious uh, or parthenocarpic cucumber varieties one single stem is allowed from the beginning of the plant and fruits are allowed on the main stem only so three seed crops such as such varieties are possible under greenhouse like muskmelon watermelon and summer squash so coming to muskmelon so single stem training and double stem training these are the two approaches the single stem training is the most common thing trained upright six to eight nodes uh, all the branches are removed and the female flowers are retained on the branches emerging from 9th to 16th node on the main stem and after the fruit set the tips of the branches are pinched off uh, retaining two to three leaves per the branch the top of the main stem is pinched off after 25 nodes to stop its growth then double stem training so he, here in this system the main stem is pinched off at the second leaf stage and the plants are trained upright with the two main branches and the secondary branches appear on each of the two main axes may be pinched off after the first fruit set or the two leaves afterwards the maximum three to four fruits are allowed per plant for optimum growth and the tips of the two main branches are pinched off up to 20 to 25 nodes to stop its growth further the middle portion of the plant should be allowed to retain the fruits and after harvesting first three to four fruits uh, further the fruits may be allowed to set in muskmelon the duration of the seed production can be doubled by this way to increase the seed so this is how we do it in muskmelon then watermelon the main stem is trained upright along with three to four strong branches with the help of a plastic string the first female flower if it develops below 8 to 10 nodes on the main stem it's pinched off in the middle portion of the plant two to three fruits are allowed to develop between 12 to 25th node the growing tip of each branch after second or third node is pinched off for small fruited varieties four fruits are allowed to develop per plant and developing fruits are provided a support using the nylon net bags if insect pollination has to be used in the protective structures then summer squash in this system the main uh, stems and branches are short and thus making the plant bushy and such do not require any training or pruning the older leaves are however removed for proper aeration and the winter squash has long vines and need upright training the main stem is pinched off at four nodes allowing two strong branches to develop and the two fruits are allowed to set on each branch between the 12th to 16th node the main branches are pinched off at 30 nodes to allow stop the growth and each developing fruit is uh, providing with a support using a nylon net bag then coming to our interesting breeding activities so flowering period uh, emasculation and pollination activities the flowering period in male and female parents is synchronized with the sowing time and in solanaceous vegetables the emasculation of the perfect flower on the seed parent is done a day prior to anthesis leaving the petals intact so such petals which are left intact turns yellow in tomato purple or white in brinjal 
white in sweet pepper on the day of anthesis and the flowers with underdeveloped with inverted stigmas are pinched off and the fresh uh, pollen from the several plants of the male parent is collected with the help of a vibrator on the day of anthesis. So since only ripened pollen are shed by the vibrating the flower, such pollen have highest viability. The pollen are collected in a small cup attached to a finger ring or other container as per need. The pollination is done by dipping the stigma into the pollen mass. The half of the calyx of the pollinated flowers is removed to distinguish it from unpollinated flowers. In case of egg plant, the stigma is quite receptive a day prior to anthesis, which is quite successful. Since the bees do not visit simultaneously a day prior to anthesis, which is quite successful. Since the bees do not visit the, in the solidaceous crops, bagging of the emasculated flowers is also not necessary. The pollen grains can be stored for a longer period, that is one to two months, at zero degrees centigrade using the silica gel for proper drying. Then the sex expression in the cucurbits is mainly monoecious, andromonoecious and gynoecious. The perfect uh, flower on the seed parent in muskmelon and cucumber are emasculated day prior to anthesis which is not required in parthenocarpic varieties. The, parent, uh, the perfect flowers of the watermelon on the other hand are not emasculated as the anthers do not produce viable pollen. The emasculated flowers are bagged in order to avoid the chance of self-pollination. In monoecious plants, the female flower is bagged every day prior to anthesis. The male flowers are either collected in the evening a day prior to anthesis and are kept in a moist polythene bag or collected early in the morning on the day of anthesis. So, pollination on the day of anthesis is done by dusting the pollen on the stigma of the main flowers. The pollination work commences at 7 am and completed by 9.30 am. The pollinated flowers are rebagged to avoid contamination by visiting bees. Then pollination work continues up to 15 days in muskmelon and cucumber up to 10 days in watermelon and squash. So emasculation and pollination work requires 20 to 25 uh, labors per day per acre. And insect pollinators like honeybees are largely used in cucurbitaceous vegetables and are protected seed production. But proper and careful management of these pollinators is required to avoid this pollinator destruction. Similarly, in case of tomato, bumblebees are the best pollinators among the insects, but they are not available in India. Bumblebees are not available in India. Hence, the only option uh, left to us is use electric bee or vibrators or the hand pollination in open pollinated varieties. So what are these electric bees or vibrators? We'll move, we'll see. So you uh, picture at the right hand side top, first one is a bumblebee. Which is which uh, which is all about we have talked earlier uh, just be, be uh, just be, uh, below the bumblebee is our vibrator vibrator for collecting the pollen uh, for dusting the pollen and then uh, the uh, immediate uh, left to the vibrator is our electric bee what we are talking about electric bee so it is nothing but it provides some vibration to dust the pollen which is collected uh, for uh, pollination to affect. Then hybrid seed production. The protected environments will be helpful for production of hybrid seeds of cum, cucumber, summer squash by using gynaceous lines and gibberlic acid is used to maintain such lines followed by selfing. The desired pollen can be used for production of the hybrid seed of cucumber. Similarly, in summer squash, use of ethifan, uh, uh, it was uh, in inducing the female flower at every node would help in this hybrid seed production by using a desired parental line. The maintenance and multiplication of self-incompatible lines of hybrid seed production. In case of cauliflower, there is a problem with uh, maintenance and uh, uh, multiplication of the self in capital lines for F1 hybrid seed production. So temporary elimination of the self-incompatibility will be done with the use of the carbon dioxide gas. So for this purpose, uh, the self-incompatible line is planted in the greenhouse. Bees are allowed to pollinate the crop when it is bloom and then keeping the garden closely tightly with uh, within two to six hours of pollination is treated with two to five percent of carbon dioxide which allows successful fertilization by temporarily eliminating the self-incompatibility issue. Then harvesting. So when to harvest, how to harvest, at which stage are given here. So range at 50 to 55 days after pollination, fruit color, uh, yellow or yellowish brown, cucumber. 30 to 35 days of pollination, fruit color yellow or brown, muskmelon, full slip stage or when 
crack develops at the junction of the fruit particle. Then pepper. 60 to 65 days after pollination, fruit skin color turns red or yellow. Uh, there are two types of pepper humomet. Then squash. 40 to 45 days after pollination, the peduncle is dried up to the base. Tomato. 60 to 65 days after pollination, fruit color completely red. Then watermelon. 55 to 65 days after pollination, tendrils nearest to the fruit is dried up to the base and the fruits produce a dull sound when it is tapped with the knuckles. Then few curing. As we are talking about seed production, uh, the fruit uh, harvested should be cured. How much time? Brinjal, 10, 10 days after harvest. Cucumber, 7 to 10 days. Masculine, 7 to 8 days after fruit harvest. Then squash, 20 days after harvest. In summer squash, 30 days into squash. Then extraction. So tomato, cucumber, watermelon, masculine extracted by fermentation method. Uh, it's completed 24 hours. 25 degrees centigrade requires two days for completion of the fermentation process. The pulp is stirred several times in date to maintain uniform rate of fermentation to avoid discoloration of the seeds. And fermentation methods of the seed extraction also control seed-borne bacterial canker in tomato. And uh, then the seeds are washed thoroughly with excess of clean water. Then the tomato seeds are also extracted using 10 cc of 36% HCl or NaOH is added to 4 kg of tomato pulp. And the treatment is given for a period of 15 minutes and then washed with clean water. Whereas in case of eggplant and bell pepper, the ripe fruits are crushed and washed. In the squash, the seeds are separated from the pleasant material using rice bran and then they are washed. Seed drying is done using dry air at 24, 28 to 30 degrees centigrade. Then seed yield, how it is. Under protective conditions. These are the seed yield, how it looks like. Brinjal 20, 200 to 400 kg per hectare, cucumber 450 to 500 kg per hectare, and so on. The seed yield though varies depending upon the crop or the variety, the protected structure and the crop management in different vegetable crops. But with good management, 100 to 700 kg of the seed can be harvested from one hectare in different vegetables. Then advantages of off-season seed production is possible in several vegetables, especially cucurbits. Seeds of vegetables can be produced all around the year without avoiding any season. High seed yield from small area of protected structure. Production of virus-free quality seed is possible during the rainy or post-rainy seasons as well. That provides the best opportunity for organic seed production. Uh, uniform establishment of the seed crops leads to quality seed production. Early fruiting leads to advancement in the seed production. More fruit setting due to congenial climatic conditions under protection. Uh, provides long duration of fruit setting. Different cross pollinator crops varieties belong to same family or crop can be grown in adjacently in the greenhouse for seed production without any problem of isolation. What all we have studied in the seed production activities isolation distance we never taught here. Then handling is a very easy thing during winter season and it is possible even if soil salinity is high soil uh, less media for cultivation can be employed. Then seed in case of parthenocarpic varieties of cucumber is also possible under the protected condition. Several seed crops can be possible under protective condition in duration of one year. Crop is protected from heavy rains and viral disease transmitted by insect vectors like white flies and all. We can avoid them. The protected area is always kept neat and clean so objectionable weed or diseased weed etc are under check. Then constraints. Normally cost of production is high. Uh, then seed production job is highly labor intensive and technical difficult in maintenance of pollination under protective conditions. Uh, then soil borne fungus sometimes become a severe problem for crop production.